Let me read to you a passage from the 16th chapter of St Luke's Gospel, verses 19 to 31. It's the Gospel for Thursday of the second week of Lent. St Luke writes, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate there lay a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. That's Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. In it our Lord refers to paradise. You know, one of the intriguing features of our Lord's famous parable in today's gospel that I've just read is his image of the abode of the poor man Lazarus after death. The poor man died and the angels carried him to the bosom of Abraham. In the prologue of the Gospel of St John we read that Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who is in the bosom of the Father, has made him known. John chapter 1 verse 18. When at the Last Supper our Lord announced that one of the twelve would betray him. We are told in John chapter 13 verse 23 that the disciple whom Jesus loved was reclining in the bosom, the lap or the chest of Jesus. According to the Jewish conceptions of the day, Sheol was a general place where all the dead tarried. Images of Sheol were varied and vague, but a common one was of the just dwelling in an area distinct from the wicked, the former the just in paradise and the wicked in Gehenna. It is generally accepted that the image of being in the bosom of Abraham is drawn from the real-life Jewish custom of a guest at a feast leaning on his left elbow so as to leave his right at liberty. This meant that the head of the one man was near the chest of the man who lay behind. The former was therefore said to lie in the bosom of the latter. As has just been mentioned of the beloved disciple at the Last Supper, John was in a special place with Jesus. So the image employed by our Lord in this parable would have been primarily of a banquet in paradise at which Abraham was the head of the household of God's chosen people. Lazarus lay in front of him with his head near his chest at a special place of friendship. Doubtless our Lord was here employing a popular image among many of the day and confirming by, its use, by his own use of it its truth as far as it went. We remember the Sadducees coming to our Lord with their trick about the woman who had seven husbands. How could they all be resurrected? Meaning that she ended up with seven husbands. Absurd. 
our Lord referred them to the words of God of the burning bush, describing himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So Abraham was living still and somehow with God. In our parable today, Lazarus is taken by the angels to be by the side of Abraham in a place very close to him. This is one of the many texts in the Gospels in which our Lord refers to the afterlife. There will be a place of bliss for the good and misery for the wicked. It will be definitive and there will be no passing from one side to the other. In the case of the good though, there will be much brighter prospects still for those who have lived well, which is to say, for those who have lived as Christ has taught. It will not be a matter simply of joining Father Abraham at the feast over which he continually presides under God. Our Lord's use of this image we may also take as an indirect allusion to his own work of opening the gates of, ultimate, of the ultimate paradise by his death and resurrection. When Christ was transfigured on the high mount, there appeared to him in his glory both Moses and Elijah. They were conversing him with him about his departure, the Greek is ten exodon, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. Luke chapter 9 verse 31. It was his exodus that they were discussing, his leading mankind out of the slavery of sin to the promised land of the kingdom of God, the kingdom being life in him. The paradise that was coming was the ultimate union with Jesus Christ and the Father. When Christ lay hanging on the cross, he was jeered by the rulers. The soldiers also mocked him. One of the criminals who were crucified with him also railed at him, but the other rebuked him. This man has done nothing wrong, he said. Then he turned to Jesus and made one of the most remarkable requests in the New Testament when we think of the, of the utterly forlorn circumstances of the event. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Luke chapter 23, verse 35 to 43. He, a criminal, dying next to a man he perceived to have done nothing wrong, nothing, and dying a most terrible death, saw in Jesus the king of God's kingdom. It was his kingdom, your kingdom, he said to him. An immense amount is contained in his request. Jesus supersedes Abraham and the prophets. Christ then answers with his unforgettable promise. Today you will be with me in paradise. He will be with him, with Jesus, not just Abraham and the prophets. Paradise is Christ's kingdom. Those who turn to Jesus in repentance and faith will be with him at his side in the feast of the kingdom of heaven. That is the good news of the gospel. Christ told his parable of the rich man and the poor man Lazarus to drive home the critical importance of justice and mercy to the poor. But he also alluded to the reward beyond this life in store for those who assist the poor and also for those who endure their poverty and misery in a spirit pleasing to God as did Lazarus. In the parable, Lazarus was taken by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. But of course, Christ by his death and resurrection opened the gates of paradise to all those who strive to live as God wills. There will be found Abraham also and all of his true children. That paradise will be beyond imagination in its bliss. What will it consist of? It will consist of being with Jesus, who, as St. John expresses it, is in the bosom of the Father.